Today's video is going to blow you away. I'm sorry. I cannot believe I just used that opener. Hi there, and welcome to Gimme2. My name is Mark, and in today's video, we're going to learn about tornadoes. That's what the opener was about. In just two minutes. Now, as always, if you're interested in going straight to how tornadoes are formed, that is time stamped in the description. But if you stick around for a couple of minutes before, you might learn a little extra context. But what is a tornado? So the short answer is a tornado is a rotating column of wind that connects the ground to a cloud. And these can be absolutely breathtaking natural phenomenon, but can also be extremely damaging and dangerous. Now there might be plenty of ways to subcategorize tornadoes, but the first line of break is the supercell and the non-supercell tornado. And for the purposes of the two minutes in this video, we're going to focus on the potentially faster, stronger, and much, much, much more dangerous supercell tornado. While a lot is still unknown about tornado formation, for example, why one storm forms a tornado and another doesn't, there are some commonalities. For example, all tornadoes have something called wind shear, which is the intersection of differentiating wind speeds or directions. When they collide, the atmosphere with the lower pressure tries to move around the one with the higher pressure, and this can lead to rotating winds. Non-supercell tornadoes can form when a vertical column of rotating wind, caused by wind shear, is stretched upward by a rising warm environment, and it's not necessarily associated with bad weather. Tornadoes can occur all around the world, but are most common in areas where different pressure systems tend to intersect, which is ripe for wind shear. For example, in the plains of the US, warm moist air from the Gulf in the south and warm dry air from the deserts in the southwest can collide with cooler dry air from the mountains and Canada in the north and west. Now these systems intersect all the time, and just because they do doesn't mean there's going to be a tornado. There are many, many other factors present in the formation of tornadoes. When they do form, however, they can vary significantly in size, speed, and power. Tornadoes are classified by the Enhanced Fujita, or EF, scale, which used to be the Fujita, or F, scale until 2007, with the smallest, lightest tornadoes being ranked EF0, and the largest, most powerful being ranked EF5. These ratings take size, wind speed, and the extent of the damage done into account, so you can have a much larger tornado that will be ranked a little bit lower simply because the extent of the damage was not as great. Now that we have an understanding of what tornadoes are, let's get an understanding of how they're formed. So let's get that clock started now. A pocket of moist air that is warmer than its surroundings will create atmospheric instability, and it will rise until those temperatures even out. This rising is called updraft, and it fuels storm clouds. As the air cools down at higher altitudes and the moisture combines, it gets heavier and begins to fall. This is called downdraft. Air masses with both up and down drafts are called storm cells, and the cooler downdraft tends to pass through and break up the warmer updraft before the storm can grow too large. Enter wind shear, or the intersection of differentiating wind speeds or directions. Directional wind shear can result in rotating winds as one system tries to move around the other. Speed wind shear can result in the separation between different levels of the atmosphere. When wind shear meets a storm cell, faster winds at higher altitudes pushes the top of the storm away from the bottom. This stops the cooler downdraft from breaking apart the warmer updraft and allows the storm to grow very large. The storm's cool downdraft also collides with warmer surrounding air, which tries to go around and can result in a horizontally rotating wind tube. If this rotating wind is pushed vertical by updraft, it can cause the storm to begin rotating. This is called a mesocyclone, and this kind of storm is called a supercell. As the storm rotates, the cool sinking downdraft can wrap around the mesocyclone, stretching it toward the ground as it sinks. Angular momentum, which is for a different video, accelerates the speed of the wind as the vortex stretches. As air and clouds are sucked into this vortex, a funnel will protrude from the storm, gaining velocity as it continues to stretch. If this funnel hits the ground, you've got yourself a tornado. 
Tornadoes can continue to grow and get faster, picking up wind and debris until either the parent supercell begins to collapse or the warm air feeding the updraft begins to cool down, killing the tornado. I hope you enjoyed that video. I had a lot of fun researching this information and I really hope you enjoyed watching it. If you did, please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, all that good stuff. And I hope to see you in another video.